In this video, we are going to see all the common uses of VLOOKUP and some uncommon ones as well. This is the most common use. I have some code and I want to translate it into description. Why? Because if you want to make a report based on pivot table, I don't want to show the codes. I want to show the name of the country. This is in a separate table. Typically, we call these kind of tables master tables. The name of this table is C master. The syntax is simple. I want to look up the country code in that table. You don't have to select the table. Just type the name of the table. I want data from the second column. And the last one is tricky. It's basically asking if I don't find the country code, what to do? Should I do a range lookup? It's a question. The answer could be yes or no. Range lookup yes means look in between the line. But there is nothing between US and iron. So I don't want anything to be range looked up. I just want exact match. So no range lookup. No means false. False can also mean zero. So that's it. Of course, it did not find the code for MY. That's no problem. When we update the table, the formula will update automatically. That's it. Simple we look up. Now here the last parameter was zero. That means false. I don't want range lookup. Now under what circumstances will I need to do a range lookup? So look at this data. I have some customer names and I'm going to call them for an event. I'm going to call hundreds of customers. So there are registration desks. The customers whose name starts with A to F will go to desk one for registration. G to L, not M, will go to desk two. M to R will go to desk three and S onwards will go to desk four. So this is also a lookup table. But here we are not putting all the characters from A to Z. We are just putting specific range names. We always start with the range. We never mention the ending range. So we are starting is A, ending is F. So we type G. And the last one means this one onwards. So how do you do the loop we look up? So in this case, the formula is like this. I want customer name. I want to look it up in this table. Of course, I can type the name R desk. I want data from the second column. And this time I know it is not going to find the names. I want it to look in between the lines. So this is approximate match. So I say yes to range lookup means yes or one. And now it does it beautifully. If I had put the last parameter as zero, that means no range lookup. It will not find anything. So that's where you use range lookup true for text. Now let's look at some numbers. Now I have some column which contains age of customer and I want them to be grouped. 10 to 20, 20 to 30 like that. Now that is best done in pivot table. So this is the raw data. I made a pivot table based on that. In the pivot table, age is put on rows and I have count of age. So you will notice that there are three items with 11 and two items with 58 and so on and so forth. How do you do this grouping in pivot table? Right click, choose group. It starts with whatever is the minimum, whatever is the maximum and it is suggesting group by how much? 10. Okay. So now that's how easy it is to do it. Of course, we don't want to start it with 7. So that is changeable. Remember, if Excel just wanted to show you the minimum and maximum, this would have been a caption. It's an editable text box. What does that mean? I can change those numbers. So I want to start with 0. And I want to let's say end with 90. But I still want to group it by 10. By changing that 0 and 90, I am not changing the actual data. I am just changing the way grouping is going to happen. And notice because I have edited these numbers, the checkbox went away. 
this is to visually show you that these are not real numbers. If you want the real minimum max, click on this and then it comes back. Anyway, so 0 to 90 group by 10. And then of course, it puts one more called above 90 where any number above 90 will be grouped there. That is how you do bin analysis or bucket analysis or grouping based on numbers. But there is a problem. Now in this case, we want age groups which are not uniform. Earlier it was 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Now it is 0, 11, 20 and suddenly 61. So the pivot table grouping is not going to work here. That's when you create a range table. Every row specifies the beginning of the range. You never mention the ending of the range. Ending of the range is the next beginning minus 1. Say 0 to 10, 11 to 19, 20 to 60 and 61 and above. We have two types of descriptions here. We can use either. So here is the VLOOKUP. I want to compare this age with this table. Of course, I have given it a name. The name of this table is BINS. I want it from second column and this time it is a range lookup because I want to look in between 11 and 20 as well. So I say 1 and now it works beautifully. Of course, tomorrow if you change the ranges, it will dynamically change. Same concept applies to dates lookup as well. So I have individual dates and then I have a lookup table which is called FYQTR. Why is this important? We could have used the pivot table grouping for dates as well. Pivot table grouping allows you to do grouping by month, quarter and year. Month and year is not the problem. But when it comes to fiscal year and quarters, it's a problem because in every country, the financial year does not start with 1st Jan. Pivot table assumes financial year starts with 1st Jan and that cannot be changed. So in this case, the financial year is starting on 1st April. So I've created a lookup table. Same concept. Beginning of the lookup is mentioned. Ending of the range is next one minus one. And then I have a lookup table. I want to use the fourth column here. So here is the VLOOKUP. Second column is the name of the table FYQTR. This time I want the fourth column as return value. And of course, this is a range lookup. So one. And that's it. Now you may be wondering, when it comes to numbers, it must be always compared within the range. So range lookup is always true. No, not necessary. Here is an example where we have numbers, but in this case, there is no range lookup. I want exact match. Why? So these are some transactions customers have done and we have blacklisted some customers. Maybe they tried to hack into our systems. So these are the customers, only two of them which have been blacklisted. So this is a separate table and this table is called blacklist. So now I want to cancel some transactions or invalidate some transactions, accept them or reject them. So what do I want to check? For every customer, is this customer blacklisted? So let's do a VLOOKUP. Customer ID, which happens to be a number. Second column, the second parameter is the name of the table, which is blacklist. Now there is no other column in the lookup table, so I have to accept the first column only. And then very important question, is this a range lookup or not? These are numbers. So technically range lookup will work. For example, if there was a customer ID called 556 and you make range lookup true, then it will match the customer as blacklisted. We don't want that. We want only customer number 555 and 777 to be blacklisted. So in this case, we don't want range lookup. So zero. Now, wherever it did not find an answer, that means in simple terms, that customer is not blacklisted. 
later on we'll come back to this and see how to convert that into a more understandable accept or reject but let's proceed further now many times we want to compare one block of data with another block of data for example i want to know if pencil 11 transaction has happened in another block of data now i can't do vlookup because vlookup takes only one column at a time i want this plus this to be checked here how do we do that we have to create an extra column on both sides which is a combination of these two columns so i'll call this a combo column and it is just this ampersand this ampersand is like plus for text 11 is a number but it will convert it to text now we have to do the same thing on this side and because it's we look up this is the only one we are going to compare so it doesn't matter where that particular column is because we are basically going to select only that column but generally we may want to return some other value so it's a good idea to add that column in the beginning so let's call this column combo2 and the concept is same ampersand combine the two columns like we did before and now we can do we look up i'm going to add a column called check remember the name of this table is compare So now we are going to compare the combo column where the name of the table is compare and I just want to return whether it is found or not so I'll just take the first column and this is definitely not a range lookup I want exact match and there we can see that this particular transaction is not there in the second column if you want reverse you can have a similar VLOOKUP column here. Now, of course, this is a little cumbersome. It's best to do it using Power Query by importing both as separate queries and then do an anti join, left anti, right anti, and combine. But that's a topic for another video. There is HLOOKUP, which is very similar to VLOOKUP. In VLOOKUP, why do we call it VLOOKUP? Because it is being searched vertically. Now, sometimes, you get the data for lookup horizontally like this. It's the same data, it's just horizontal. So look at the syntax. In this case, we look up. Where is this looked at? The data vertically. In case of H lookup, what am I doing? It's H lookup and I have selected this. So instead of in the first column, it is going to search for it in the first row. That's all. Is the direction in which data is stored in the lookup table. Vertical or horizontal we look up or H look up. now finally let's see how to handle errors for example here what are we doing we want to check is this customer blacklisted so what did we do we did a we look up on customer ID on the blacklisted customer IDs if it is not found then it's good I want to approve that transaction if it is found then it's bad I want to reject the transaction so now I have to use an if kind of function to check did it return an error so how do you do that now this is a long function so I'm going to just select it and cut it what is the if condition if I want to check if that function returns an error is error is the function if this thing gives me an error then what do I want if it gives me an error that means customer is not blacklisted so I want to approve the transaction and if it is not then what do I want to do reject the transaction that is how you use is error function now in this case we were looking for an error and if there is an error the value was different if there was no error the value was different in this case is error function is a good idea now let's look at this function we have just a simple vlookup here and here what I want is if the vlookup is there if it finds the currency 
I want to use it and multiply it. Amount multiplied by rate. And if there is nothing, I want zero. Now, if I use the if error formula, notice what will happen. Again, I am going to copy this. So we know how to do this. We have to use if is error. So let's do that. If and then the VLOOKUP. What do I want? What do I want? If there is an error, I want zero. But if there is no error, what do I want? I want the actual value which the VLOOKUP is going to give me. Now the problem is, I'll have to put the whole function again. And then of course it'll work. But the problem is, generally there are few cells where there is an error. Most cells don't have an error. In which case, the same VLOOKUP function has to run once to check if there is an error. If there is no error, it has to run again. So it makes the Excel file slow. So this is a bad idea. That is why there is a nice function which combines the two. Combination of if and is error. So let's write it all over again. If error. It's a single function. What is it saying? Check if there is an error. Where? Oh, in that we look up function. So if there is an error, what do you want to do? Give zero. And if there is no error, what to do? Why do you have to do that again? You already know what to do. Give the output of the VLOOKUP. So now the VLOOKUP function has to run only once. So this is faster. So when do you use if and is error? When the if condition true, output is different. If condition false, output is different. When do you use if error? Where you only want exception for error and otherwise return value should be VLOOKUP. Finally, there is a new function called XLOOKUP which is way better than all the lookup functions together. The only caveat or only disadvantage is it works only new version of Office onwards, Office Pro Plus. We will cover that in a separate video. But that's all for now. Thank you.